Welcome! If you've been watching my channel lately, you'll know that I've got a new retro computer, this Epson QX10. This is a CPM computer, normally comes with two floppy drives, about 256K of RAM. Uh, I spent uh, last video implementing an IDE compact flash adapter for storage for it, but it has, you can look in here, it's got four more slots that are available. And those slots we could put stuff in. Um, now there were some cards back in the day that existed for this. There was um, a memory expansion card, there was a serial parallel, an A to D, even a, a GPIB instrument bus card. So there was some stuff made back in the day. So I decided to make a few new cards and I have made and will be showing off in this video a sound card using the AY38910 uh, sound chip and a speech synthesizer card using the SPO256A-AL2 phonetic speech synthesizer. Here is the schematic for the QX10 soundboard. So I wanted to first give some credit to Ed Brindley for his design for the RC2014 sound card, which I used as an inspiration for my own. Now going through this over here, we have the expansion connector for the QX10, and it's a pretty standard Z80 style connector. It has an address bus, data bus, some control signaling such as um, IO read, IO write, a reset, a clock, and a BSAK. The BSAK needs to always be high for us to do an IO transfer. Here we have the address decoding where I used an ATF16 V8 PLD, programmable logic device. That differs from some of my recent projects where I've been using uh, 74 HCT688 window comparators again. But I decided in particular with my choice of sound chip, the AY38910, it has some kind of strange control signaling for the BC1 and BDIR control signals that takes a few extra gates in order to implement that logic. You end up with two or three or sometimes even four logic chips needed, so I could combine that all into one PLD. And then an advantage is if you screw anything up, you can simply reprogram the PLD. So into the PLD, we have eight address lines. We have the IO read strobe, the IO write strobe, the BSAK, um, A14 and A15, which we can use to implement ZX Spectrum style addressing if we chose to. I did put protection resistors on three of them because these are pins that can also be used as output, so I wanted to protect the bus in the case where I had a programming error. There is a dip switch that I am not currently using as inputs, and then there are three outputs, which are BDIR and BC1, which feed directly into the AY38910 and you can consult the data sheet to understand exactly what those two lines do. And then there is a chip select, which I use to enable this 74HCT245 data buffer. Now this is a bi-directional buffer. It takes the chip select as well as a direction signal, which we get from the BDIR pin. Um, it takes on one side the eight data lines from the QX10, and on the other side are eight data lines to the sound chip. Now out of the sound chip come three uh, channels which we mix together so that one channel goes to left, one channel goes to right, and then one channel goes to both left and right. In addition to mixing them in that manner, I take the left and right signals, I mix them together, and send them down to an LM386 amplifier. Now the LM386 is just a mono amplifier and I can use it to drive an internal speaker on the QX10. I have three connectors, one of them is a 1 8 audio jack for line out, a 1 8 audio jack for speaker out, and a header for an internal speaker. Over here is the logic for driving the clock signal. So the AY38910, it requires a clock, typically around two megahertz. The QX10's bus is four megahertz. So each one of these two flip-flops will each divide the signal in half. So if we use one flip-flop, we can take the four megahertz and change it to two. Another flip-flop, we can take the two megahertz and change it down to one. This jumper here controls which one of those division ratios. So I use it jumpered one to two which gives me a two megahertz clock. Now, if you really wanted to dial this thing in exactly to an MSX or a ZX Spectrum, which have a clock that I believe would be a little lower than two megahertz to the AY38910, then you could select a specific oscillator and put it in here, uh, rather than using the QX10's bus. You could use this oscillator, move this jumper instead of going two to three, go to one to two, then you could put in whatever oscillator you want. I'm thinking to nail it for an MSX, maybe you want something like a 7.3 megahertz oscillator with a 
division of 4, and you could set that up on here if you wanted to. I also buffered the reset line using a spare gate on a 74HCT32. Okay, here is the soundboard. So the big chip we have here is, of course, the AY38910. Next to it is the 16V8, uh, the programmable logic device. Then we have the 74HCT245, the data buffer. Over here we have another logic gate, a 74HCT32. And below it we have the 74HCT74 uh, flip-flop that is used to do clock division. Uh, these two jumpers here set whether you're, you're using the uh, clock from the bus or an external oscillator. The oscillator would fit into this socket. Um, and the other one sets the uh, divisor, whether you're dividing by 2 or by 4. Um, so the QX10, it has a 4 megahertz clock in it. So when we're selected internal and divide by 2, we end up running the AY38910 off of 2 megahertz. Over here we've got the LM386 audio amplifier. Uh, we've got a jack down here which is line out. Uh, I haven't populated this spot which is where you would put a speaker out jack. And up here is a speaker out header if you want to put a speaker inside your computer. We've got the volume pot. I've got a couple dip switches here that feed into the PLD that would let you configure something. I don't really have anything that you can configure, maybe change the address or something. And then a disable jumper, so in, if you jumper this across it should disable the board. Here is the schematic for the QX10 speech board. It's a little bit different than the soundboard that I presented earlier. Rather than using a PLD, I use a 74HCT688 uh, window comparator. And the way it works is it has two ports and it will output our chip select low if the two ports match. So you can see I ran the address bits into this one and dip switches into that one. So that lets us take six bits of the address space and match them to this dip switch. So we can set this dip switch to what we want um, A7 through A2 to equal and it will match on those lines. Also used it to match the BSAK line since we want that always high. And I used it to implement a disable jumper. If we put a jumper in this disable jumper, we'll pull this line low, which will disagree with that line and cause it to never output a chip select. That's useful uh, when you make a project to have a disable jumper so you can turn it off without actually having to yank it out of the computer. On the output side of it, we take that chip select and we combine it with um, the IO read and IO write strobes to get a read and write strobe to the speech synthesizer. Now the speech synthesizer is the SPO256A-AL2 is pretty much a write-only device. It takes eight data bits here and an ALD signal, which is its write strobe. So uh, we take the write out of the um, address decoding logic, goes into here. We buffer the eight data bits going into there so that when you write uh, to the port that is uh, selected by the addressing logic, it will load that phoneme into the speech synthesizer. Now coming out of the speech synthesizer are two feedback bits. There is the SBY, which is high whenever the speech synthesizer is speaking, and LRQ, which goes low when the speech synthesizer wishes for a new phoneme to be loaded. We take those, we run them through another buffer. This buffer we have hooked up to the read strobe, so that whenever you read from the port that is selected by the addressing logic, you will get in bits D0 and D1, the SBY and LRQ bits. So that allows you to do your polling loop. You write a phoneme, and then you sit here reading until you see the LRQ go low, and then you can know you can load your next phoneme. Now I also wanted to make this so it could optionally be hooked up with um, uh, interrupts. So I took the LRQ, and I also ran it down here through another uh, 74HCT244 driver, um, and ran it out to IRQ, which I run to a jumper, to the IRQ header on the expansion connector. So if you install this jumper, you should be able to have this thing so that you could write an interrupt-driven software instead of polling. Then I also use this to buffer the reset line. Coming out of the speech synthesizer, we go down here, we go through a low-pass filter, which is identical to the low-pass filter that is in the SPO256's datasheet. And then we hook up to an LM386 audio amplifier. And we come out to a pair of connectors. One of them is a 1 8 audio jack. The other is a header, which you can connect the internal speaker to. So that's really it. It's a pretty much a straightforward implementation of an SPO256 speech synthesizer. 
Okay, here is the speech synthesizer board. So the big chip is, of course, the SPO256A-AL2 phonetic speech synthesizer. Next to it, we have um, a crystal. This was a 3.2 megahertz crystal. A 3.12 megahertz crystal would be more accurate, but I did not have any of those left on hand, so I used the 3.2. Order some of the right one uh, when I get a chance. Got various logic chips next to it. I think this is the 74 HCT32. We've got a couple of um, 74 HCT244 bus driver buffer type chips, and then we've got the 74 HCT688, which is the address comparator. It is hooked up to a set of dip switches that let you set the address. So I have this, I believe, set to address DC. Uh, we've got the LM386 audio amplifier. We've got the volume control here. There is a little bit of interference. This would be like some high-pitched whine and stuff. Um, so I am going to come out with another respin of this board to try to improve the ground plane and improve the filtering on the power supply and maybe get this board so it sounds a little bit better than it currently does. So I went ahead and I mounted two speakers in the front of the case. This is the top shell and this is the little vent openings in the front. It's kind of around where the, the main speaker is on the motherboard. I mounted these two little modern speakers with pigtails sticking out into the card area. I'm going to run those to my music card and my speech synthesizer card. Okay, let's go ahead and install the two boards in my QX10. So you can see I already have one board installed in this slot. That is my IDE compact flash board. It's got a compact flash card sitting in it and I went over the compact flash board in a previous video so I'm going to take the sound card and install it in this slot right here. I've already got a handy pigtail coming out where I can plug in the speaker for the soundboard and then I'm going to take the speech board and I'll plug it into the very next slot. So right here and then as with the soundboard, I already have a pigtail set up for the speaker. It's hooked up, it's ready to go. And you can see the volume potentiometers, they're accessible here from the top. Speakers are plugged in, it's ready to go. We can crank this up and try it out. Okay, let's go ahead and do a quick demo. So I have already booted up. And as I said before, my compact flash board is already installed, so I have two hard drive. Drive G is where I have the soundboard software, so if we do a directory in here, you see I have a program called Tune.com installed, and Tune is the music player that came off of Wayne Warthin's uh, ROM WBW distribution. So I modified it slightly for the port addresses uh, and such for this soundboard, as well as to modify it uh, so that it didn't require uh, the ROM WBW BIOS, so it'll work with QX10 BIOS. So we can just run tune, and then we will pick, uh, let's, wicked.pt3, and it should start playing from the internal speaker, which is hidden in there. Try to turn the volume up. And let's try another one. So tune, and let's try attack.pt3. Okay, I think it sounds pretty good for coming out of a tiny little speaker that I hid in the case. Um, let me turn this down. There, I turned it down. Uh, so it sounds pretty good for that tiny little speaker, but if I hook it up to my external speaker, I've got an external stereo speaker kind of up here, um, it'll sound even better. Let's plug this in. So yeah, with the external speaker, I think it sounds really good. We'll try one more. Thank you. 
Okay, let's try out the speech synthesizer. So I'm going to load up basic. Then we're going to load talker.bass. Takes a moment to load. And then let me just list it out so people can see how it works. Um, it's just a short demo. And what it does is, uh, since this is a phonetic speech synthesizer, the SPO256, we actually have to list the phonemes for the phrases we want. So I programmed a phrase into it called Scott Was Here, and I have loaded an array with all of the phonemes that compose that phrase. So we've got like the SS phoneme, the KK2, then the um, AO, a pause, and the TT, and that is the word Scott. And that is 55, 41, 23, 2, and 17 to make the word Scott. So it, it has uh, the phrases coded directly into it. I did that offline. And then we have a little menu where we can tell it to say a particular phrase. So let me go ahead and run it. And then let's do Scott was here. I'll turn up the volume on that. Oops, it's actually already at full volume, so that was Scott was here. And then this is the same program I used on uh, RC2014 board that I made. So it can say RC2014. And I've got Epson QX10 programmed into it. How about the all of the letters in the alphabet? And then I've also, I did the, the Daisy Bell song. This is always a favorite of mine because it was in the Hero Junior robot that I had when I was younger. Um, this is not the official Hero Junior rendition of Daisy Bell because that used a Votrax SC01, whereas this is an SPO256. So this was kind of me attempting to write the song myself. It's not quite perfect, uh, but and it won't really sound like it's singing. It'll sound more like it's talking, um, but let's give it a shot. Okay, yeah, so it's not the greatest audio. There's a little bit of interference um, in the speech synthesizer. I'm going to do a respin of the board and hopefully get cleaner audio output so it'll sound a little bit better. But I think basically it is working, so I do now have a QX10 that can play music and it can talk. Thank you for watching my video. Please visit my website at www.smbaker.com for more electronics projects and sand rail stuff. Bye.